Dr. Newman, you're also an epidemiologist. I presume the prospect of a viral pandemic keeps you up at night as well. No. Opening with a reminder of how terrible the COVID pandemic was, just so we can all be properly terrified by the possibility of the even more dangerous fungal pandemic that's about to be introduced. As if I didn't have enough to be pessimistic about, I can now add fungus zombies to the list. Great. Also, that 1968 title card might be the most unnecessary title card to ever title card. I think the plethora of cigarettes and 29 different shades of beige gave us all the context clues we required. Also, the third. Discount John Hay. Holy, four weddings and a funeral. Bacteria. No. You like saying no. Would you prefer he said yes and lied? Is this show on Fox News? Permanently fixed on one unifying goal to spread the infection to every last human alive. Slightly more angry Peter Capaldi here must be a fun guy at parties. I mean, he doesn't really leave much room for optimism, does he? If I was watching this live, I'd switch over to the nearest sports channel. <laughs> Just because you're using fungi instead of blood and different music doesn't make this any less of a discount Game of Thrones intro. Having to be reminded that 2003 was 20 years ago. If you keep making me feel like an ancient one, this will be the last of me watching this series. And as if this title card wasn't enough, this shot alone is an absolute orgy of evidence that not only is this a young person's room, but also that this is a young person's room from the mid-aughts. Going straight from drinking orange juice to coffee, despite all the warnings and clerks too, I'm pretty sure even 8am would be more appetizing. You can get your uh, homework done. Pedro Pascal is not my daddy in this scene. Concrete guy's gonna be there? Yeah, they said maybe. Maybe. I didn't expect the Venn diagram consisting of characters who have a passion for concrete and characters who are complicated father figures would ever overlap to include Gerard Butler, Tom Hardy, and Pedro Pascal, but here we are. Sniff testing your leftovers. I mean, I know we all do it, but just like my grandpa used to say, it doesn't have to be whiffy to make your tummy squiffy. What kind of masochist in 2003 would use this classic phone case with the belt clip, which made you look super f***ing cool, by the way, but still put the phone in their pocket? Your t-shirt's inside out. Sh oh man, that is so annoying. But at least his day can't get any worse. Going through your father's drawers. Trust me, that is asking for trouble, and she's very lucky that the show's commitment to portraying a wholesome relationship conflicted with her finding, well, just go through your parents' drawers and find out for yourself. TV Sense does not actually recommend going through your parents' drawers and will not be held liable for any resulting injury, nightmares, or loss of respect for any family members involved. Dad, you love biscuits. I do, but I'm on Atkins. I swear shows mentioning the Atkins diet is to the mid-aughts what Bayesian cigarettes are to the 60s. Expo bumper positional stickers. In case you confused it with Austin, Minnesota, and literally any other time in 2003, why the f*** does it matter that it's September and why are you telling me this now? Macbeth. No, I don't hate Shakespeare. I just wish we'd teach kids about the fun ones. Like Hamlet. Homework is due! End of class tomorrow! Well, if the homework's due at the end of class, then that's classwork. There is nothing in that description that would encourage me to spend any time with that assignment at home. You should go home. Panicking in front of a child and telling them they should go home, but not actually telling them why they need to go home. What the f***, random lady? People out there need to get right with Jesus. Three nails plus one cross equals four given. Yep, that's the way to get the kids into Jesus. Math. I was thinking we'd make some cookies. Chocolate chip? Raisin. <laughs> yeah, math and raisin cookies. I feel the Lord. Also, I always find it odd when people spin this kind of religious rhetoric in the face of violence and death because the Bible might be the most violent book that has ever existed. All the effort that went into making me believe it's 2003 just to blow it all by including 2005's Murder Ball. This is some amazing background suspense that reminds me of the library scene in It Chapter 1. Regardless of whether you've played the game or know where this is going or have no knowledge whatsoever, these few seconds set up the horror of what's to come perfectly. Dog knows that shit's about to go down before any of the humans do and is briefly acknowledged but ultimately ignored. Cliché. Also, sure, the dog's acting weird and whatnot, but, but what we really should be focused on is how horribly organized this bookcase is. It's f***ing chaos. A comment today from the Austin Police Department regarding a rash of violent incidents across the city. The only thing worse than using random news position to explain what's going on is having one of our characters not paying attention to the random news position. Where's the cake? Sh Forgetting cake? What makes forgetting the cake even worse, though, is that you're going to be stuck eating raisin cookies, Joel. Also shows that pile on the undomesticated dad who's useless at looking after himself and relies on the little kid good at life routine this heavily are screaming from the rooftops that something is going to happen to said kid. And yes, maybe there were only four people watching this who didn't know it was coming, but they deserve to be surprised traumatized too. Mrs. Adler? Because f*** 
the TV, the dog, and the clearly freaked out shopkeeper that have all told me to stay home. Instead, I'm going to wander into my neighbor's house that has no nope written in blood all over because I'm only smart when my dad needs to look dumb. Look, Nananoki could be a fungi-infected zombie, but there's also a strong possibility she's just getting Mrs. Adler back for choosing to make raisin cookies instead of chocolate chip. I mean, who the f*** chooses to make raisin cookies? <laughs> Grandma Sophia Portobello is nice enough to stop chasing Sarah just long enough for Joel to show up, park, get out of the truck, grab Sarah, and get ready to attack. Get the truck! Right now! Also, convenient Joel conveniently has a weapon in his hand when he exits the truck despite having no way of knowing Sarah was in trouble. The fungicidal nanomaniac hadn't even left the house yet. It takes 77. No one will be seated as Joel and Tommy decide aloud which interstates and highways they will be taking to get out of town. How do you know we're not sick? I'm saying it's mostly people in the city. Mostly. It's Jimmy's place. I might carry more weight if I had the first clue who Jimmy was. You couldn't have given us a scene with Jimmy instead of confirming that kids get bored at school. But he had the same idea. To take a major roadway out of the city? Yeah, that's so weird. Hey, Tommy. You might think it's the subtle nods like this backseat POV scene that have inspired people to call this the best video game adaptation of all time, but I would like instead to refer you to the person whose POV we are seeing this from. Nico Parker, along with Pascal and basically every damn person in the pilot, gives such sincere and engaging performances that this jumps from being a great pilot based on a video game to simply a great pilot that just happens to be based on a video game. Head of the river, I'll find a way! A way that wasn't climbing over the car, but instead had to result in the being separated. All so that he can Tommy X Machina them if few scenes from now. Well, one of them at least. I realize these aren't technically zombies, but there are still moments like this that feel right out of a Walking Dead episode. Maybe it's impossible to escape that comparison, but I'm me, so you're still getting us in. Yes, sir. Military sent to protect the people from viral outbreak actually ends up mostly being there to kill people whether they've contracted the virus or not. Cliche. Come on, baby, I gotta get you up. Okay, okay, okay. Three sin removals might seem excessive for one video, but this is likely the only opportunity I'm going to get to remove a sin for one of the best video game prologues ever committed to disc. And either way, Pedro nails this scene. Oh, so now you don't give us a specific year. Likely because the show doesn't want to date itself when we get to season four and wonder why it's still 2023. But in that case, don't fucking date the earlier scenes. We know how time works. Also, damn these sudden time jumps and their ability to strip all the momentum out of a story. Yeah, yeah, their hands were tied by the video game, but guess what? They're not. Do what you want. Wouldn't it have been interesting to see how Joel deals with the loss of his daughter in the opening months and years of the apocalypse? All you've done now is left the door open for a disappointing spinoff called, oh, I don't know, let's say Fear the Last of Us. No one wants eight seasons of that. This is clearly trying to tease us into thinking that we're seeing a fully infected individual stumbling along, but we know that the fully infected move quickly, so why give us a slow zombie stumble tease? Unless, of course, you want us to keep thinking we're watching The Walking Dead, and we really don't want to be watching The Walking Dead. Schindler's Red Petticoat. Oh, so now you're giving us the year? Then what was the point of the whole thing where they did the thing and the thing? Why is this even a thing? This is dumb. I don't even care what time it is, what year it is, who? Cares. This is the vaguest list of symptoms I've ever seen. These could be a sign of anything from slight intoxication to having a nap at a weird point of the day that now means you're too awake to go back to bed at a sensible time, so you stay up until 5 a.m. playing video games and just resign yourself to being a nocturnal beast. It's me. I'm the nocturnal beast. Rawr. Also, this is great information for the audience, and I'm sure it won't backfire when a snarky YouTube channel takes a screenshot to make sure it's totally obeyed by the show in the future. How did you get this? And now we have another scene of a child dying to demonstrate how bleak the situation is. And call me a wimp, but I think two child deaths in less than three minutes may be pushing me to my HBO Max. Tomorrow we got street sweeping or sewer maintenance. Which pays more? That'd be the one with the sh This is Boston, where Yankees fans have always told me that there is sh in the streets, so that didn't answer the question he asked. Gore Lieberman shirts in 2023. And yes, I understand the world has been out of the shirt making business for 20 years, but I'm not buying anyone was wearing those shirts in 2003 either. With a of death by I don't have a hard time believing that an overzealous military state could bring back the death penalty. I can also buy that they do it publicly to inspire fear and obedience from those pesky masses. But people still have a choice not to turn up, right? It just seems so strange to me that an entire crowd would turn up for this sh and not just the occasional sociopath. Looking for the light in the darkness is great for the Green Lantern Corps, but in this world, I imagine it's pretty terrible advice. I bet more times than not, that light will be attached to a speeding car, a freight train, or an assault rifle. Yeah. Oh! 
test survives this. I'm not a, I'm not a fire I just realized in this universe, the fungi infection spreading was probably why Firefly was canceled and not because of the terrible Fox executives. The sin, as always, is network television. Seven, eight, f- you. Kids. Hey, there's a line. This is the sole objection we hear to the man skipping a very long line of people all wishing to send messages to their loved ones. 73K Orlando out. Florida. Show me where the tower is. You can't be serious. Joel, it's in Wyoming. Wyoming. Joel managed to find his stash in a matter of seconds. Instead of having to inspect every item in the room, jump into some walls, pick up some random cup, retrace his steps, drop some random cup, restart the day, and then finally resort to checking Google. It's just not realistic. Reading physical maps. I mean, the fungi couldn't wait till after the iPhone was invented in 2007. What a fungal ass. Pushing your partner over to get in bed instead of just getting into the bed on the other side. It's a miracle you're alive. It's a miracle any of us are alive. Tess would be excellent on the fringe of TV sins. I mean, she would be a regular mind hunter. Oh, come on. You want me to go back to the mushroom puns? Also, in a tour of rocks in isn't it enough things? That may be the biggest sin in television. Well, except for that 90s show. I mean, why the f*** does that exist? Joel, listen, Robert is terrified of you. So you march out of here, all Clint Eastwood is going to get wind of it and skip. How does she even know Robert is still alive? Remember that this f***ing happened. You fight for 20 years and you get nowhere, you're not a rebellion. Just spray paint. Because having people talk about the rebellion action-y stuff is so much better than actually showing the rebellion action-y stuff. <sighs> Did 47 years of Walking Dead on a farm not teach show writers anything? Is this real? I believe it is. That is not an answer. At least not an answer that would result in me agreeing to abandon what little semblance of home I have at the risk of being hanged. Whatever you need, whatever it takes, we'll get her where she needs to go. Scenes like this drive me mad. Kim's immediate and unquestioning commitment here just shows that we could have saved all of the time if Marlene had just opened with whatever is on the slip of paper instead of burying the lead and expositing us to death. I won't tell anyone about any of this, I swear. Where are you going to go? This is a valid question. Where does Ellie think she could go? We're going to find out she's carrying the infection but not showing any of the symptoms. But anywhere she goes, once they check her with the scanny doodad, they'll shoot her on sight and not ask any questions. Ellie should know this. So seriously, where is she trying to go? Yes. Episode promised a showdown between Joel and Robert, but chooses to kill off Robert before it could happen. No fair. That was a lot of gunfire. Fedra's gonna be on the way. A lot of gunfire that neither Joel nor Tess heard while they were crawling through the walls, so I think you're okay. I can do it. Kim, you don't have a f***ing ear on your f***ing head, could you please? <laughs> you get her there safely, and they'll give you what you need. Fueled up truck, guns, supplies, all of it. I know Marlene is low on options, but isn't promising Joel a truck and a load of weapons and supplies giving away exactly how valuable Ellie is to someone who isn't exactly part of the cause? She just said, I don't know what you're both capable of for better or worse. So wouldn't it be better to trust one ear Kim to get the job done rather than Joel who might be motivated to hold her for an even higher ransom? Also, despite that, it sure is lucky that Marlene is spontaneously gifted with Joel, man who just happens to have a lost daughter the same age as Ellie and will use that trauma to protect her with an instinctual fury. You are all that matters. My team will not jeopardize that. Well, that suggests that her team knows exactly why Ellie is so important. So how many f***ing people know about this super secret secret? Ellie's importance is becoming less of a secret and more of a this is definitely going to end up getting Ellie kidnapped and Marlene will wonder where it all went wrong situation. Also, if Marlene was taking Ellie herself, why would she even need to risk telling the team why she's so important? Shouldn't they just follow her orders? Don't f*** this up. Says the person that just f*** this up. So what's the deal with you anyway? You some kind of big wigs daughter or something? Something like that. Okay, I know I sinned Marlene for letting on how special Ellie is, but at the same time, now that she's trusted her with Joel and Tess, why didn't she just tell them exactly why she's so special? Like, what if they spot her bite and have a huge freak out and decide to kill her? They kept saying, like, like wake me up before you go-go. Gotcha. Using Wham! as your choice of an 80s reference. 80s means trouble. Code broken. Listen. No, Joel, you listen. If you didn't want your code broken, maybe don't leave two thirds of the cipher inside the damn cipher book. Holy sh! I'm actually outside. Neither Joel nor Tess thought it would be smart to prompt the child, who's never been outside, to not do sh like this once outside. For the record, we don't ever need to see someone urinating. Like, ever. Really, man? Yep. 
We're doing this by the book. And here's a great example of when it would be extremely beneficial for Joel and Tess to have some knowledge of Ellie's condition. F***ing Marlene and Ellie. Pilot does not contain nearly enough rearranging of pallets. In case you confused it with Jakarta, Indiana. Good thing this random hostess knows who Dr. Ratna is. What would the officers have done if she didn't? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm glad this actor got paid to do some pointing, but that doesn't make the sequence of events any less confusing. Tadi juga sudah mau selesai. Just finishing? She still had bread left. You didn't let her eat the bread? You are monsters and nothing can convince me otherwise. Apakah saya ada berbuat suatu kesalahan? Tidak. Then could you at least give her a hint as to why you've abducted her? Okay, I'm guessing the military doesn't want to cause a panic, but this guy seems more interested in creating tension for us than in making sure this poor woman doesn't feel like she's about to be executed for an overdue parking violation. Walking. 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 Excitement? This is a cool visual for the audience, but why is the professor of mycology doing this? Sure, she would be there to review the results, but shouldn't a pathologist or an upholsterer be the one to check the corpse stuffing? Choosing to own a couch of this color. Police datang. In the f***ing head? Admittedly, I don't know anything about the Indonesian police force, but I would hope that in almost every situation, a bullet lobotomy is in option number one. Yeah, but until today, you also thought there was no way the cordyceps could live inside a human body. So isn't there at least a chance that this new strain could have some vulnerabilities? Jadi apa yang harus kami lakukan? Look, I know this is deliberately extreme to put the fear of fungus among us, but who goes from four deaths and maybe 14 cases unaccounted for to bombing an entire city? Those 14 missing people may not even be infected. There's playing it safe and then there's blowing up the planet to make sure it doesn't get hit by an asteroid. Do I look like I'm infected? Judging a cordyceps by its cover. It's what's inside that counts, Ellie. She found me after I was bitten. And she didn't shoot you. Clearly not. Ellie would infect all of us with laughter at TV Sins. I'm here. Tear out a few pages. Tess is suggesting that this 20-year-old magazine might make for good wiping material. And I would argue that anything from the moss beneath her feet to not wiping at all would be more hygienic. She made it through the f***ing night. It doesn't matter. But I mean, it kind of does, right? Man, Joel's pessimism is really starting to take a toll on Tess. And I really think she was on the fringe of figuring something very important out here. Is it chicken? Whatever it is, I have very serious doubts there's a refrigerated section in Ellie's backpack, so it's most likely a future case of food poisoning. Whatever happened to me is it's the, the key, key to, to finding find the vaccine. That's what this is. We've heard this a million times. Okay, Joel, professor of mycology, Texas Miller. But have you ever heard this from someone who is living proof of immunity? Or at the very least, someone who survived after being bitten for longer than you thought possible? Also, why are Joel and Tess so surprised that's what this is? She's a 14-year-old kid who appears to be immune to bites from the infected. How could they not know she was going to be used to help find a cure? I guess the test just said her and Joel aren't good people, but they're fairly smart people, right? Also, also, why the f*** does Joel care anyway? As Tess is about to rightly say, you're not getting the gear you need in exchange for a vaccine. You're getting the gear for delivering Ellie. So what difference does it make if they can turn her into an antifungal cream or not? This isn't going to end well, Tess. Tess death shadowing. Can I have a gun? Absolutely no. not. Okay, Jesus, fine. I'll just have a f***ing sandwich at them. And give them food poisoning too? They've already got a fungal infection, Ellie. No reason to make their situation worse. We should get moving. Yeah, you can start by running up that road, running up that hill, be running up that building. Apparently the pitch for Last of Us was just like The Walking Dead, but much less of the exciting dead stuff and much more of the walking. Long way or short way? I mean, it's the long way or the whiff f***ing dead way. Which makes me wonder why Joel suggested the we're f***ing dead way. How did you get bit? You know the old mall in the QZ? Didn't think there was going to be anything in there and then one just came at me out of nowhere. I feel like there's a lot more to Ellie's origin story than we're being told and I hate being teased like this. The main story confidently progresses on, proud of the seed it's planted. Well, I just feel left behind. Well, I mean, you got some balls on you, sister. Using the male reproductive parts as the symbol of courage without considering everything the female reproductive parts have to go through. Or have go through them. Or ones with split open heads that stay in the dark like bats. Wouldn't this be a great time to explain how that particular fun guy likes to behave at parties? They clearly know it's a thing, and considering it hunts based on sound, waiting until it turns up is a pretty shitty idea if you need to explain that it hunts based on sound. Show teases us with a piano playing frog, only to never show it again. This is so so gross. Everyone's respective orifices survive this funky pond water. 
part of me loves Ellie's childish playfulness, but another part of me thinks she should be smarter than to make unnecessary noises in a place that she can in no way guarantee doesn't have mushroom monsters present. So, yes, ma'am. Ding, ding, indeed. Yes, ma'am. Would you like me to check your luggage? Yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. You're I'm a weird kid. No, this is exactly how kids work. And Joel, having had one, should really know this. One thing I can tell you for certain, I really hope this is the last of the jump scares. Because if it's not, it definitely won't be the last of the jump scare sins. Kicking a person while they're dead. Oh, Come on, it wasn't that bad. You try climbing some f***ing floors with our knees. See how you feel. Then may I be so bold as to suggest using your feet for the next flight. Maybe I could climb up there, work my way around and open it from the inside. Or you could break the doors down. I mean, in video games, wooden doors stop you because beyond them lies the nothingness void of a matrix yet to be programmed. But in the real world, that's almost never the case. It's a bit of a mess, so I'm gonna need a few minutes. Feel free to take this time to bond or create further tension between yourself and your co-lead, whatever feels natural. Where'd you learn to do that? The circus. Is the knife flipping really that impressive? Or is Joel just making small talk? Because Joel should be harder to impress and or should hate small talk. Where are you from? Texas. Texas. What about Tess? Detroit. It's in Michigan. I go to school, I know where Detroit is. The depressing fact that making this statement in our version of 2023 doesn't necessarily guarantee knowing things. Good to see that the US school system may have actually improved thanks to the apocalypse. How long do infected live? There's others been walking around for 20 years. How does Joel know this for certain? In the chaos of the apocalypse, I can't imagine there's been a lot of opportunity to track or carbon date the infected. Or has he seen a few walking around wearing an I went to 2003 and all I got was this lousy fungal infection t-shirt. What about that guy last night? Fortunately, Tess arrives just in time to prevent us from learning anything truly meaningful about Joel's character. Now, that might seem harsh, but some insight into whether or not he feels remorse for beating that guard to death would have been pretty powerful. And since a little birdie told me we never come back to the subject, it either feels like a wasted opportunity or one the writers didn't want to flesh out. What now? Okay, she didn't say the words, but that expression had you better come take a look at this cliche written all over it. I see you, Tess. I see you. They're connected. More than you know. This shot and the following explanation of how the cordyceps work is so f***ing cool. Now quick, accept your sin removal before I change my mind and add a sin for any nightmares this will inspire. Yeah. Cooked. Finally some f***ing luck. Premature cordyceps liberation. Maybe he was attacked outside and crawled through the doors. Or maybe he found a way to travel through time, which involved covering himself in jam, running through a museum, and peeling his own skin. You see, he's not really dead. His consciousness has just returned to 2003 to prevent all of this from happening. Or you could not assume the best and get the f*** out of there, Tess. Okay, from this point forward, we are silent. Not quiet. Silent. Wouldn't this have been a good plan A, Joel? Also, is silent even an option? Sound works through vibration, and that's going to be caused by every clunky boot, every squeaky floorboard, and every single breath. If silence is what's required to survive here, then I'd suggest you find another route or Sandra Bullock. Kids. I really feel like this is information that could have been brought to Ellie's attention yesterday. You all right? Well, I didn't shit my pants. <laughs> Bella Ramsey, man. Let's get the f out of here. Why hasn't this already happened? There's no way of knowing if they got them all, so why are they hanging around and talking as if there couldn't be 10 more ready to pop out and deprive us of what little Anatorv we have remaining? Over there? Yeah, I know, it looks scary. That was scary. This is wood. Being this casual about wood, this wood looks pretty old, which means you could get splinters and then an infection and then, oh, I don't know, fall a thousand feet to your death. Is it everything you hope for? Asking this after only two episodes. I'm gonna have to at least see some giraffes before I make that kind of judgment. And it's not like episode three is gonna be one of the greatest episodes of television ever created with some of the most incredibly nuanced performances put to film now, will it? They went inside. Come on. What is Tess so pissed about? That the truck people went inside or is it where they parked the truck? It's probably the latter. Tess gets it. I mean, one of them's gotta have a map on them. Right? Even if they do, it doesn't mean it'll be helpful. Unless Tess thinks there'll be a giant red X that marks the spot of where Ellie was supposed to be headed. Have you even ever mapped before, Tess? Because I don't think you have. F She's infected. 
I'm sorry, Tess, but dick move. That bite is about as close to the brain as it gets, which means she only has a couple of hours before becoming Servopolis Alfungi, so she really should have told Joel and Ellie straight away. Regardless, she definitely should have mentioned it before entering a building that she hoped was filled with fireflies. Also, while killing off Tess sends the message that no character on the series is safe, I'm still pretty pissed off that I only got two Anna Torf filled episodes. That's Anna f***ing Torf. <laughs> Throwing hand grenades into the marinade of fuel at the feet of humanity's only hope for survival. We're not keeping her! Yes, you are. And you should be. And if you want me to like your character more, Ellie, then stop being such a f***ing kid. Kid. And of course, the lighter doesn't work. And by that, I mean it won't work for all of the predictable amounts of tension building some time until it suddenly does work. Fungalingus. I'm sure this shot, much like the last shot of the first episode, means something if you played the game. But I haven't played the game, and therefore this is just 30 seconds of unneeded post-apocalyptic building porn. And I hate porn. Wait. Trying to play Jenga with rocks. Sounds fun, but then 47 f***ing rocks fall over onto your little toe. And then that little piggy can no longer go to the market because you're sidestepping your way down the street. And everyone thinks you're doing a terrible Ed Grimley impersonation. <laughs> it's in miles west of Boston. <laughs> it's in miles west of Boston. Don't underestimate the power of shrooms, people. It took them 20 years, but they managed to move Canada all the way to 10 miles west of Boston. How much longer? Five hour hike. We can manage that. Saying this with knees under the age of 30 to someone with knees over the age of 30. We're only three episodes in and I feel like we've already used our walking, walking, walking excitements in as far as it can go. In fact, I'm less irritated about them walking all the time in this series and more irritated that you've now made me sick of looking at reading and writing a long-standing sin. You're causing me to sin my own f***ing sins, The Last of Us, and I do not like it. But also, walking, 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 excitement? Happy now? I said good day. What are you looking out for? Living in a world that's 20 years deep into the apocalypse and asking dumbass questions like this. When mushrooms have taken over people's brains and are using humans to eat other humans, you are always on the lookout. How'd you get that scar on your head? Someone shot at me in this. See, that's cool. Tell me you've never been shot at without telling me you've never been shot at. No way. I had a friend who knew everything about this game. I'm really glad Ellie has these fun memories to hold on to and didn't end up losing that friend extremely tragically. I'm sure if that had happened, this arcade machine would be far more triggering for her. Is there anything bad in here? Just you. Ah, getting funnier. He is not. Sure, let's open the nope door and have a peek inside at all the nopeness. How has Ellie survived to 14? Does she actually have the ability to respawn? Convenient feminine product is convenient, although your body needing to eject parts of itself each month is extremely inconvenient, so maybe this balances out? Let's just send periods. I'm not sure if this is a sin for curious kids being stupidly curious, or if we should send Ellie's obvious beginnings to her future as a serial killer. Let's just ding it twice to be safe. Ellie. Show goes for the, oh, she really is in trouble tension pause, as if there's a chance that creative license could extend to killing off Ellie in episode three. How did it even start? If you have to get bit to be infected, then who bit the first person? I thought you went to school. Yeah, but they only taught her the stuff that doesn't need to be exposited to the audience at some point. Was it a monkey? I bet it was a monkey. Why do you have to immediately jump to monkeys, Ellie? Not every disease has been caused by a monkey, but also, f monkeys. They're mean and they throw their shit at you. Cordyceps mutated. It's all that got into the food supply. You eat enough of it, it'll get you infected. So the tainted food all hits the store shelves around the same time Thursday. But like, Everywhere? The whole planet? All at once? Last episode, we discovered that the woman from the factory in Jakarta went fungicidal maniac on Tuesday, 23rd September, and that was the first recorded infected. So what we're saying is that by two days later, the flour from that factory was somehow distributed to all the different brands, was turned into bread and pancake mix and whatever, was sent overseas to America and beyond, and arrived at hundreds, if not thousands of stores simultaneously? Oh, and regardless of delivery days, all the products across the country made it onto the shelf so that by Friday, enough people were infected to hit a point of no return. This is unbelievably quick. Unbelievable. And the moral? Don't put dates in your TV show. There's stuff up there you shouldn't see. Oh, no, I have to see. Kids. Can it hurt me? No. I know we're assuming physical harm here, but the mental trauma of witnessing a mass grave really should be implied here too. Be too honest, man. But brutal honesty is one of Joel's greatest qualities and why we all love him. Ellie should be grateful that he would never hide a life-changing secret from her, even if the whole world's survival depended on it, right? 
we don't have a date for when Fedra was established, but this is four days after the outbreak, and they have signage created, QZ set up, and are executing people at will. Given the organizational problems we experienced with our actual pandemic, I'm calling shenanigans on anything with Fed in the title pulling this off. Also, prequels. Positioning a camera in a way that results in your God-given right to defend your property being obstructed by your God-given right to display your patriotism. You know what? Looking around at all the guns and ammo in this room really didn't give me enough context for the number of guns and ammo this character has, so thank goodness for this Guns and Ammo magazine so I can really understand how much he likes guns and ammo. Guns and ammo. 10 Last of Us Lane. The most unbelievable aspect of this entire episode is that all the wine is still there and hasn't been stolen by the military. If he had a way to cut the lock, then why did he risk damage to his vehicle with the other fence? Scene does not contain my mouth eating this steak. You might assume the sin here would be for over four minutes of showing us Bill survivalisting his way through the apocalypse, but you'd be wrong. The actual sin is assuming that we didn't want to see the full four years. I'm really confused as to how Frank managed to fall into this hole. It's not even covered and seems to be the only one in sight. To be honest, I can barely see how it would trap an infected. Why did Bill miss the perfect opportunity to build a moat? How'd you get that? Believing that asking this question will prevent me from sinning the absence of an explanation. If I feed you, then every bum you talk to about it is gonna show up here looking for a free lunch. And this is not an Arby's. Well, Arby's didn't have free lunch, it was a restaurant. Frank would be employee of the month at TV Sins. Bill goes from get the f off my lawn to here, take a shower while I prepare this Michelin star gourmet meal with red wine pairing. I know the power of boners is strong, but why didn't Bill just send him off with a sandwich and a canteen? There is more. No, if I can't, I want to. Believe me, but... Whew. I don't know. I'm calling BS on the man that hasn't eaten for two days being full up on this kind of a serving. The position of the food on Frank's plate moves between shots. And yes, that is how picky I have to be to send this masterclass of storytelling. So I guess I'll be going then. I know he ends up not kicking Frank out, but if Bill at any point thought Frank would have to leave and walk all the way to Boston, why would he serve him all this wine? Friends don't let friends hike in infected walking areas while drunk kids. It's an important lesson to learn before the next apocalypse. You know how much these are worth? Currently nothing. And now it's Bill's turn to be excellent at TV sins. We usually just do one of these per video, but some bastard is limiting how many sin removals I'm going to be allowed to give, and this basically counts as one. Rummaging through another man's piano bench without his explicit consent. Love will abide. I'm very glad we get to see the Bill-Frank relationship play out. It's truly beautiful, but Frank picking the one song out of all those music books that would hit Bill's heart the most is still some convenient bullshit. So... Who's the girl? Girl you're singing about. There is no girl. I know. If you'd have told me that Nick Offerman butchering a song by Linda Ronstadt followed by this exchange would be the most emotional scene of 21st century television to date and that it would be in a damn video game adaptation, I would, I would, well, I wouldn't believe you, okay? At least it can't get any more emotional from here. But also emotions. And emotions will always get a skip. Wait, where's my skip ding? What's that, Cinny? You love this episode so much that you're refusing to skip anything, and I'm just gonna have to grow the f up and deal with my emotions? Sh All right, then. Uh, I guess for now, I'll just send that I'm not either of the beards in this scene. What's your name? Bill Doggy Dog. Oh, f you. Skipping three years and assuming once again that I don't want an entire multi-season TV show following Bill and Frank playing house in the apocalypse. The boutique. Are, are we hosting formal garden parties now? I don't know why Frank has to be so dismissive about formal garden parties. They're so fun, especially if they have the little sandwiches. I love little sandwiches because they're little and you can eat 30 of them and it's like you're only eating 27 sandwiches. It's heaven. Oh, and I had this idea that we should uh, we should use codes for the radio in case anyone's listening. Out of all the mysteries that have been presented to us over the last couple of episodes, the how did they come up with the secret music codes wouldn't have even made my secondary list of things I needed to know. But here we are. Pick it up. I can't. I can't. Just one more loop around. Nope, not buying it. I refuse to believe any relationship survives coerced jogging. No, not from the strawberries. Don't knock having sex on top of strawberries till you've tried it, guys. It's magical. Unless, of course, you're allergic to strawberries or hate to get sticky or... You know what? Just don't have sex on top of strawberries. Hold your hand there for me. Hold your hand there. Yes, put your unsanitized hand over an open wound. Does anyone in these situations ever think about the dangers of infections? Leave the gas on. The fence, the fence will kill the rest of them. If that's true, why the f*** were you insisting on staying outside with a belly full of lead poisoning, or better still, why did you go out there in the first place? 
and we'll get married. Then you will crush all of these up, put them in my wine. Then you will take me by my hand, bring me to our bed, and I will fall asleep in your arms. Freshly picked strawberries. This is supposed to be about zombies and shit. How dare you make me feel my own feelings? Damn you, Offerman. Damn you, Mazin. Damn you, Druckman. Do you love me? Yes. Then love me the way I want you to. <laughs> okay, okay, pull it together. I can do this. Uh, the, pic the picture on the wall is wonky. That <laughs> one looks like it was drawn by a child. The plant pot is a trip hazard. <laughs> Aw, look, it's the meat cute death trap. Also, it's been like 16 years since they met in this hole and that's what the grass looks like? Has Bill or Frank been mowing it? Why? Don't the traps work better if the grass is overgrown? Here's a sin for all of television. The fact that we are yet to have a post-apocalyptic anthology series that actually focuses on human stories and the beautiful moments that can be found in the horror. Not fair on the episode, perhaps, but <laughs> that's what you get for having the nerve to show us what's possible. Oh, I should be furious. But from an objective point of view, it's incredibly romantic. Sorry to curse the moment, but that's still pretty subjective. To whomever, but probably Joel. Why would they leave Tess's name off the envelope? It's as if they already know she's dead, which they should not. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do. I leave you all of my weapons and equipment. Use them to keep- He's dead. How is he still making me feel things? Sandy, I'm begging you, let me skip. Joel checks the fridge and finds the battery parts, but why wouldn't Bill have mentioned this needed instruction in his letter? That seems like a very important item that was left out. Why was the music on? If you didn't reset the countdown every few weeks, this playlist would run over the radio. Stealing from Lost in a universe where Lost never had a chance to exist. I'm taking a shower, and then you're showering. Getting this cozy in a house that has two rotting corpses in the master bedroom. If you told me that the scene at the piano would be topped in less than 30 minutes by several even more powerful scenes, well, you wouldn't even be able to hear what my thoughts were because I'd still be a blubbering mess. But it's insane how perfect this episode is. And since sin removals are the only way I show affection, here's another three as an apology for not skipping directly to episode four. Okay, five. But the next episode had better really suck. I'm not sure if this song actually reminds me of the opening titles for Sherlock or if I'm just having a fungus-fueled hallucination. Either way, I'm now more interested in working on my Sherlock of Us fanfiction than I am in watching this episode. I can't figure out who Ellie is talking to here. Is she talking to me? No, seriously, is, is she talking to me? Am I a clown? Do I amuse her? Sorry, probably got those references all screwed up. I've never actually watched Joker. Yeah, this breaks down over time. This stuff's almost water. That stuff should be 100% unusable. Diesel has at best a 12 month shelf life. Gas in general can break down after three to six months. Joel telling me that this old gas coming from a car currently growing a substantial amount of moss will work doesn't make me believe it will work. Back in the day, we'd drive 10, 12 hours on one tank. I'm not saying there isn't a car that can make it 10 hours plus on one tank, but they sure weren't as plentiful as Joel's making it seem with this story. It doesn't matter how much you push the envelope, it'll still be stationary. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give a send to myself because I'm most likely the only person who actually finds that joke amusing. Here, this make you all nostalgic? Joel is so distracted by Hank Williams that he takes his eyes off the road for an anxiety-inducing seven seconds. This noticeably hairless bear is the only issue I have with this faithful recreation of the magazine from the game. Why are all these pages stuck together? Uh... I'm just... With Joel is more scared of this question than he is of the infected, which is fair, but it's also an outdated stereotype about fathers being scared of the talk. Littering. Seeing this Arby sign makes me realize those old where did everybody go commercials in this universe were accurate predictions of the near future. And for some reason, that makes me sad. It also makes me want a roast beef sandwich and some horsey sauce to dip my curly fries in, but also the sad thing. Earlier, Ellie said, I want to see a tank. But when they drive past them, Joel doesn't say, that's a tank. What a dick. All right, that's enough for today. And here's this conveniently laid out turn off because I'm tired and I'm ready to set up camp and cook some ravioli. Hiding far away from the road is a good idea. However, this long and very direct set of tire tracks is definitely giving away your position. What am I even eating? That is 20-year-old Chef Boyardee ravioli. That guy is good. The prevailing wisdom regarding the flavor and safety of 20-year-old canned food appears to be you probably don't want to f around and find out unless it's absolutely necessary. And if your mouth goes numb, it's probably botulism. I guess what I'm saying is that Ellie shouldn't be assuming gender. Fungus isn't that smart. 
This is too remote for infected anyway. Show tries to let us down easy with his hint that no fungus zombies will be joining us in the episode. Joel was worried about the smoke from building a fire, but not about the light from this lamp. Actually smells kind of good. Well, that would be Frank's then. Speaking ill of the rotting bill. Oh, what the f*** is that? You don't like coffee? Jump scaring Ellie's morning with coffee, along with her inability to not let anything around her go without giving in to snooping. So the sin, as always, is Ellie and coffee. Why isn't he with you? Long story. Is it longer than 25 hours? It's not, but it's probably going to feel like it, so I'm coming in hot and heavy with a request for a skip. If you don't think there's hope for the world, why bother going on? I mean, you gotta try, right? You haven't seen the world, so you don't know. Keep going for family. This is why this story works. It's about so much more than dealing with external apocalypse problems. We get to see the characters navigate their internal struggles as well, reminding us that these aren't just video game avatars, but real people with emotions and fears that they must fight along with the fungus among us. What if you don't find him? I will. How do you know? I'm persistent. Oh, the superpower of persistence. That always works out in the end. It doesn't get in the way of those other superpowers like extra human strength, laser eyes, and invisibility. Nope, persistence trumps all. This will work out well for Joel. You got it pretty early if you want to grab more sleep. I'm not even tired. Kids. Screw it. We've never seen Joel be the type of person to just say screw it. So this is how we know that the writers were at a loss for how to make something bad happen. We can jog right around this tunnel. Not pictured in the scene, jogging. Having sat through an Underworld Matchstick Men double feature, I can tell you with the utmost certainty that this is a sin. Not the Matchstick Men portion, but the Underworld portion takes all or any of the good taste left over from Matchstick Men. Hey! Please help! We're left to assume this is a trap. But are these guys just always ready to pull this? Clearly not that many people are driving anymore, so how often exactly would the time it would take to set all this up even be worth it? These tires look much more inflated right before the crash than they did a second ago because production put the safety of their stunt personnel ahead of continuity. I mean, don't get me wrong, that is the correct choice, but I still have to send it. You make it through. We promise. The Bad Guys Who Deal Out Promises, a podcast produced in association with the same guys who send you emails about your Amazon account being tampered with. Look at me. They're not gonna hit you. All those Mandalorian episodes have allowed him to know when he's dealing with people who have attended the Stormtrooper School of Aiming at Things. Getting pissed off that the guy you're shooting at shoots back at you. Joel is amazingly lucky that this guy chose to run at him when he opened the door instead of immediately shooting. This scene has devolved into a convenient medley of things working or not working, Also, our hero can survive this. Seeing the reality on Ellie's face differ from her attitude in the mirror earlier is an incredibly powerful character moment. In a world where children are allowed so little innocence, what little exists for Ellie keeps getting taken from her. All I can do is remove a sin and appreciation of the character and the performance. Not a single person checks if there are any Doritos left in this vending machine. Ellie, I gotta get in there. I can't fit through. Joel absolutely could fit through the hole in the wall. Waiting for three episodes and almost to the 25 minute mark of your fourth episode to show us Melanie Linsky. You had Melanie Linsky this whole time and you kept her from us? Nothing for God's sake. I delivered you. I held you in my hands. I honestly have no clue what Kathleen is trying to find out or why Stathis Borons from David Cronenberg's remake of The Fly is in the situation he's in. But I'm pretty sure just being the doctor who delivered said adult when they were born does not give you the right to do whatever it is you probably did. I mostly just wanted to mention The Fly, but I feel strongly about the other stuff too. Also, it's so good to see John Getz. He's an insanely underrated character actor, and I'm glad he'll be hanging around for a long... Damn it! This is Henry's work. Understand? It's surprisingly difficult to take any threat from a person named Henry seriously. I'm genuinely shocked she's been able to get this many people to rally behind her cause. Also, show continues to not tell us what happened after the plane crash where the soccer team was stranded in the woods. The guy with the beard is the first in command because he has a beard, cliche. Let's be honest, we all suspected that Kansas City would be the first to go all Mad Max. Nothing in this scene is the least bit shocking. You shouldn't have had to, you know. Well, you're glad I did, right? Well, you're just a kid. What a weird way to say thank you for saving my life, Ellie. You put it in your pack. You shoot your damn ass off. Fair enough, but isn't there an in-between place for her to store the gun? Having her have to get into her pack in a last-minute kind of situation doesn't seem smart. This smile after being handed a gun. I know it's a different world than our own, but that doesn't make the smile any less creepy. No sign of them. You? Yeah. Perry is shockingly good at his job and seems to know what needs to be done, but he follows all of Kathleen's orders without question. It's a very interesting dynamic, and it's sinful that they don't have their own show, so this could be explored further. These bikes were left to die here like this. 
showing us this thing, which is obviously related to the fungus, only to then not talk about it for the rest of the episode. How is this less important than some dude named Henry? Seal off the building for now. Saying this instead of abandoning the city and, I hate to say it, moving to Ohio. Okay, I'm in. Take a look around first. I feel like that would have been a good idea before immediately jumping into the room. Walking upstairs. Walking upstairs. Walking upstairs. Excitement. Joe. Joe! What? What are you doing? Joe lightly seasons the floor with glass shards because... I don't want someone sneaking up on us while we're sleeping. But he doesn't consider barricading the door even a little bit. Or not sleeping in view of the front door where someone could just shoot him and Ellie before they even stepped on the glass. Did you know diarrhea is hereditary? What? Yeah. It runs in your jeans. Even cleverly written poop jokes are still poop jokes and always a sin. Joe! They really could have ended on this beautiful scene with Joel and Ellie laughing together as their relationship has grown to the point where there's space for humor and joy amidst all the chaos, danger, and pain. And open the next episode with them being held at gunpoint. That would have been just as impactful. If the story's good, you don't need cliffhangers. Watching Pharaoh Bender steal power on Osiris 4 and thinking, yeah, we should rule exactly like him when we take over. Yeah. Claiming people will receive a fair trial while dragging a body with at least 17 knives stuck in it really screams due process. Did it make you feel better? I'm sure nobody was happy about making such a terrible decision, but put desperate people in a situation where they have to do awful things to get the bare necessities of life, and don't be surprised when they do those things. They didn't sell out their friends for a flat screen TV. Food and medicine are vital. If I had to sell out Jeremy to get a burger and fries from Five Guys, you bet your ass I'd give him to Fedra. People gotta eat. Completely unrelated, let's take this time to announce our newest TV sin sponsor. Your informers, inform. Well, I do hate to side with the Midwestern despot here, I've got to admit their hesitation doesn't make sense. There are some humans that could stand on principle even at the cost of their life, but in a room this size, there would be at least one person with a hand immediately in the air begging to give up any and all info. Kill them. Damn. Melanie Linsky's come a long way from sneaking into Charlie Sheen's bedroom. Though, I guess after 12 seasons of Two and a Half Men, I might be driven to insanity enough to attempt to build an authoritarian regime as well. When you're done, burn the bodies. It's faster. Faster than what? I guess fire is a bit faster than the corpse barrels on Breaking Bad, but in a world where mushrooms possess people, burning bodies isn't the faster option. It's the only option. 20 cans and 6 pounds of drug for the three of us. If we stick to the minimum, I think we can make it 11 days. Please. I'd put away six pounds of jerky in 11 minutes. So I guess we all know who isn't going to survive the apocalypse. These two are great. They'll make an excellent permanent addition to the cast. But grabbing a bag of crayons and a gun with no ammo in it doesn't say a lot for Henry's ability to prioritize. Eye beams. Who dreams of having superpowers and starts with f***ing eye beams? I don't want to poke holes in Henry's plan, but personally, if I had 11 days worth of food, I'd have spent it getting 11 days away from this shit. Painting in an unventilated attic. Kids. I understand this is a sweet gesture and a confidence booster, but how confident is Henry that that pain is safe for using on skin? This seems like a rash decision. We didn't hurt you, so you don't hurt us, right? That's right. So we're f***ing tone, man. That's just the way he sounds. He has an asshole voice. Joe, tell him he's okay. Everything is great. Dude. <laughs> I love everything about this. Joel and Ellie are great together, but adding Henry and Sam to this dynamic? Chef's kiss. I'm just glad this isn't some cruel game by the show to completely destroy us by the end of the episode, right? We didn't hurt you. So you don't hurt us, right? Pointing a gun at someone and not admitting it might cause emotional or psychological harm. So we're f***ing tone, man. Tone policing the man you're holding at gunpoint. Dude. As much as I love this scene and Ellie, I think she's maybe being a bit too chill here while being held at gunpoint. Who's her dad? Season 4, Walter White. Where'd you get these? From Bill. He's dead. I thought Joel was the awkward one. Hey, Ellie, nice sweater. Where'd you get it? From my Nana. She has dementia. <laughs> Dad in a long time. Look at this. So wholesome it even warms the cold dead cockles of my heart. I'll puke afterward, of course, but at least I've got the whole warmed up cockles thing going on now. I'm sitting how hard Henry is pushing on that pencil. Writing utensils are a bit of a commodity in the apocalypse. Ease up on that graphite. All these highways surrounding downtown Kansas City are technically accurate. Interstate 35 also makes up the western boundary, which you've left blank. If you're gonna draw and label a map, fill the whole thing out. Don't have ass two things. Whole ass one thing, Henry. Kansas City has a subway? Not just a subway. Several subways. More than 20. And there's also a Quiznos, Blimpy, and a Firehouse Subs. You really should do more research. You notice anything strange about this city? No infected? The city or the series? Just wait, that joke will kill in about four episodes. 
feds that drove them underground 15 years ago. How the f did they manage that? And why can't the other federal districts replicate it? Endure and survive. Roll commercials. I know he's only eight, but that was some pathetic goalkeeping. We're not doing so good. We? Maybe the search would go better if you were helping instead of sitting up in your childhood room doing nothing. He would be horrified by the things I've done. And if you've come to tell me that Michael wouldn't want me to hurt Henry, that he would want me to forgive, I know that too. Just in case you saw Kathleen order the murder of a room full of prisoners and thought, hmm, maybe there's still some good in her. Here is her, I know I'm wrong and evil and I don't care speech. No one's going to be here because my plan worked. Premature celebration. I can't remember a sniper this comically bad. Was he a stormtrooper in another life? Leaving your back door unlocked while you're sniping. That's how spies break in and backstab you. And even if you've got a Razorback equipped, they can still just headshot you while your eyes in the scope. Thinking you can spin fast enough to shoot a man who's not only several decades younger than you, but is absolutely draped in plot armor. Anthony had known about Joel's crew for maybe two minutes at most, and to get from downtown Kansas City to that point would take long enough that they could escape across the river. Unless, of course, they move at season seven Gendry speed. Really is a testament to the Rigon Stark school of running away from things that their campus not only survived the apocalypse, but continued to graduate students all the same. Well done, you guys. Well, this is what happens when you f with fate. I'm not sure that this happened to any character that f with Dr. Fate. And I watched Justice League, Unlimited, Young Justice, and Black Adam. So you've killed and maimed and monologued your way through Kansas City. The man who betrayed your brother is right in front of you and your gun is drawn. Oh look, vengeance is at hand, but wait, that flaming truck just sank under the ground? That's weird, huh? I could shoot Henry and then turn, but nah, this deserves all of my attention. Also a sinkhole? Well, that's a shame, really gonna lower the value of that property. It'll just be that much harder for a hedge fund to turn the house into six apartments and charge triple the market rate for rent. They'll only be able to charge double now leaving your chores undone. That will always come back to bite you eventually. Zombie show remembers how to zombie. Not immediately retreating as soon as Fungus Face showed up. You're like three feet away from vehicles and 20 feet away from several houses you could fortify. Didn't he just reload? It's nice of him to still run out of ammo for dramatic effect though. Oh no. Henry's gone from hiding behind automobiles to hiding under them. I love Henry and Sam, but their survival instincts are complete shit, And they're just absolute trash at hide and seek. Stop! How the hell did Kathleen make it across the entire chaos-filled battlefield unscathed? Just think of all the cars she must have had to hide behind. For someone so hellbent and focused on revenge that she literally sacrificed her entire city, she is very easily distracted from said revenge. Oh no, someone's being murdered by an infected. Let's stop and stare because the same thing hasn't been happening for the last 20 minutes. You know what? Hurting infected was probably easier than getting these three to move consistently in a straight line. Look, I don't know exactly how I'm getting to Wyoming. I'm probably walking, but if you want to. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be nice for Sam to have a friend. It was touch and go there for a while and they never passed up an opportunity to stupidly hide behind a car, but I'm relieved Henry and Sam made it. I look forward to this becoming their trademark skill in season two. Thinking either of these kids is going to sleep after the horrors they've witnessed this evening. Well, that's a weird question for him to ask. Oh, no. I know you did not introduce this adorable and lovable character just to kill him off in a single episode. Because that would be cruel. And would prevent me from getting attached to any other characters for the length of the series. That's right. Your attempt to make me care has made me care less. You played yourself, show. Also, Joel and Henry foregoing a bite check after that huge battle? Seems like a big oversight that neither of them would have made. Medicine. Okay, whew, that's a relief. Ellie's immune, it's the whole point of the show. So now I'm sure she'll be able to save Sam. This couldn't be another and even more manipulative and cruel trick by the showrunners, right? Hey, no one is more eager to save Sam than me, but why is she cutting the palm? Of all the places to cut, you choose somewhere highly sensitive, often dirty, and that will take forever to heal? Maybe it looks dramatic on camera, but for once it'd be nice to see what common sense looks like. All right, problem solved. You had me go in there for a second, The Last of Us. Now, time for bed and more death-defying, harrowing adventures in the morning. Wait, why does Cindy keep adding sins instead of taking them away? Promise. Unkeepable promises. Look at these two, best friends for life. Cannot wait to see the spinoff. Cindy, you are really confusing me. What the hell, man? Hey. 
Why didn't he say hey back? He's obviously awake. That's just rude. Oh, and apparently that's the end of the episode. Wait, why is this still going? Cindy just keeps muttering something about me being a wimp, concerned for my well-being, something about Phoebe from Friends being old and yelling. I can't figure it out. Anyway, not sure why I'm still here or why the credits seem to have jumped in so suddenly. Huh. Oh well, Last of Us remains my favorite show and I love how it makes me feel. <laughs> Long live Joel, Ellie, Sam, and Henry. <laughs> Cindy! Henry, no! <laughs> Forcing the audience to relive this trauma again. You want to bring back my favorite post-apocalypse gay couple as well? Please don't. When I cried after episode three, my wife said I sounded like a raccoon with four broken legs. He made him soup? If Pedro Pascal shows up at my house with or without a gun, I'm making him soup. Hell, I'll make him a souffle. I'll light candles. I'll put on some music. And then, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's actually not in the TV sense script. That's, that's my fan fiction. <laughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> you look at anything like you? bit but i ain't seen him come on joel you kind of walked into that one you might be armed with a gun but graham green's armed with wit and you will lose to it every time have you seen the green mile he's fantastic you got a map why are you lost you must have missed all the street signs in the enormous f***ing forest <laughs> Uh, I don't know how many sins I've taken off for Bella Ramsey, but it'll never be enough. Go ahead and remove another. I didn't mean to upset you about your brother. Apologizing to the man who just a second ago had a gun pointed at you. If your brother's west of the river, he's gone. Show will disprove this theory in about 20 minutes. I'm okay, I'm okay. Are you? You know what the best thing to do during a panic attack is? Ask the person suffering a bunch of rapid fire questions. That always calms me down when I'm having a hole punched through my chest by anxiety. Thinking you can survive a Wyoming winter with just jeans. I'm not sure the writers have ever visited Green River during the cold season, but you ain't walking around with just denim for long. Each episode, I'm hoping we've seen the last of Joel and Ellie continuously walking, but each episode proves that this will not be the last of me being disappointed. Come down from there, you're gonna break your neck. Dads. Can I have some? No. What, just to warm up? Alcohol warming up the body's a myth, and can actually lead quickly to hypothermia, especially under conditions such as the ones Joel and Ellie are in. Joel is a terrible father figure and somehow immune to hypothermia. Not sure which I find more cynical. I mean, probably the father thing, but he should still be suffering from hypothermia. Also, how does Joel even still have alcohol? When they were forced to only take a few things, did he really believe alcohol was on that level of importance? Sheep. I would raise sheep. They're quiet. Joel has obviously never been to a farm before. Sheep are most certainly not quiet. They will bleat every night. You want quiet? Grow some crops. Plants are quiet. Sally f Ride. Actually, her middle name is Kristen. You might want to reread some of those books in the library, Ellie. Marlene, she's a lot of things, but she's no fool. If she says they can do it, they can do it. Maybe, but why is Joel believing this all of a sudden? He didn't want to keep transporting Ellie until Tess made it her dying wish for him to do just that. He flat out said he didn't believe there was a possibility of a cure. I know he likes Ellie more, but that changed his entire opinion about the possibility of a cure? Dream of... Sheep ranches on the moon. Sheep ranches on the moon? <laughs> That's almost as ridiculous as whalers on the moon. Who carry a harpoon? And I was quiet. I checked my six. I looked for tracks. I found the high ground and I kept watch. You found the high ground? So you weren't just taking lessons from Din, but from Obi-Wan as well? Most impressive. With me on Before you go, go. Random people on the side of the bridge are random. And they appear to have cameras? Why do they call it dressing? It's like, you should call it undressing. Cause it is, it's like undressing from the inside. Episode has time for Ellie preparing her type five. Damn. You're no Will Livingston. So weird that you name dropped the Revolutionary War era New Jersey governor. I don't see what he has to do with this situation. See, I didn't need to play the games to get the show. Just needed my good old fashioned history degree that came for the small price of $40,000 in student loans. Don't ask me, I don't have a clue. You know, you could have just made something up. Great suggestion. I'm sure he'll keep that in mind for later and it will cause no trouble whatsoever. Look at that river. It's crazy blue. Actually, I believe that particular shade in the river is cerulean blue, not crazy blue. <laughs> f***ing amateurs. How about we just talk this through? How about you shut the f*** up? Wyomingites. <laughs> if you're infected, he will smell it and he will rip you up. But then wouldn't the dog just get infected? I don't infectious disease much, but I've played Resident Evil enough to know I don't want any zombie dogs roaming the country. Now her. The dog wasn't growling at Joel upon approach, but is growling at Ellie even though it smells nothing on her either because I guess the dog has a great sense of dramatic timing? You'd think the Ranger Joe here, after 20 years of living in a world of fungus-infected creatures, would understand that the mask going over the nose is probably the most important part of wearing the mask. Unless, of course, it's a political statement, in which I guess you can list the cause of death later as free speech. Just looking for my brother. It's all nothing more. 
What's her name? We're going to find out Tommy is at this settlement and Maria is his partner. Still, why did Maria immediately think, oh, he's looking for his brother? I'm sure this is Tommy's brother. There aren't other people at the settlement with missing family members? And honestly, the idea that Joel would have wandered into the territory of the specific settlement that was housing Tommy is wild enough in its own right. I'm handing out five sins of this whole operation, and if anyone has an issue with that, they can meet me at high noon by the sycamore trees. I mean, I won't be there because I hate violence, but the sycamore trees are very pretty this time of year. How the f*** did they have enough spare horses for Joel and Ellie to each get their own? Did the group have two extra they brought along for the hell of it? Or did these horses not bear their former masters to good fortune? It's been a while since we've had a proper meal. Hey, don't you dare insult Florence's soup like that. You had a proper meal like two days ago. You draw power from a dam. Got that working a couple years ago. After that, sewage, plumbing, water heaters, lights. This place actually f***ing works. This place actually f***ing works. Collective ownership. So, uh... Communism. Nah, nah, it ain't like that. It is that, literally. This is a commune. We're communists. Admitting to being communists, which honestly would be like only the 176th thing to be scared of in this post-apocalyptic venue. It's right below attacked by clowns and a few notches above attacked by dogs dressed as clowns. Holy f what is up with this random hand and why is no one saying anything about it? I guess I could send a community wasting any resources on a bar, but what strikes me more odd is that there's a working bar in this town and no one except Joel and Tommy are currently at it. Once we get bacon, I mean, what's even left? Making getting bacon your last priority. Go we'll grab some supplies and be out of your hair in the morning. Telling someone you're stealing some of their sh without asking first. Character who lost their child thinks they see their child in a crowd and it turns out to be someone else, cliche. I have no idea who these people on the 10 hottest boys list are, so this sin is for Hocus Pocus. You wanna celebrate a cool movie about witches from the 90s? Get a fucking sticker for the craft. Gross. Still more economical than tampons and pads after the apocalypse. Do you think the QZ is using resources to manufacture feminine hygiene products? I'd wager not. Bet they're still making Viagra though. Leaving a fire going in your house unattended. And yes, I know lots of people do this, but it doesn't make it any less dangerous or sinful. Let me get my scissors. Oh, well, no, I'll trim. That's all. Just the ends. I promise. Well, I'm sure these are all very kind gestures. Forcing someone to accept your generosity without consent is problematic. The new clothes are nice, but you didn't ask if she had sentimental attachments to her previous outfit. And now you're pressuring her into a haircut that she probably needs, but might not be comfortable with yet. The only people who can betray us are the ones we trust. Well, that's not even remotely true. You don't need to trust someone to get betrayed. You think Lando trusted Vader when they struck their bargain in Cloud City? Not even a little. And yet, he was betrayed all the same. Forcing kids to watch The Goodbye Girl. Or laying the metaphors on too thick in your episode. Make your choice. I choose both. I figured I'd save you the trouble. How does this town have so many clothes and shoes that fit Joel and Ellie so perfectly? It's like that scene from the second season of Prison Break where Michael digs up all the outfits laid out for him and the other guys no one had a clue would be escaping with him. Also, any season after the first season of Prison Break. And today I thought that dog was going to tear her apart because it smelled something on her. And all I did was stand there. But what exactly was Joel supposed to do? If he tried to save Ellie from the dog, most likely both of them would have been shot and killed. That was a no-win situation. And Joel might have plenty to beat himself up over, but this is not one of those things. What exactly did you hear? I have to leave her, you have to take her. Eavesdropping. Or kids, make your choice. I choose both. Maria told me about Sarah and... No, don't say another word. Great idea, Joel. I think we should all just take a second to think about the things we've said and skip. I'm not sure as hell ain't your dad. Hey, Siri, set a reminder for the end of episode eight to sin it just in case Joel calls Ellie like his baby girl or something. I've set that reminder. Would you like to hear your list of appointments for tomorrow? Uh, sure. You have an appointment with your therapist labeled recovering from The Last of Us at 11 a.m. Yeah, that sounds about right. You came here to say goodbye or something? No, I came here to steal one of these horses and go. Forced dramatic timing is forced, and honestly not all that dramatic. You deserve a choice. I still think you'd be better off with Tommy. Let's go. I'm glad to see them reunited, but doing it this fast kind of sucks the energy out of their last argument. We should have waited an episode. That way we had a week to really marinate in their upcoming separation. Doing it here makes the fight and subsequent reunion kind of feel cheap. Riding a horse. Riding a horse. Riding a horse. River? The contractor. That's pretty cool. Chris Pine and most people that watched it might disagree with you, Ellie. If the Fireflies were nice enough to spray paint their image so you knew where to find them, they could have at least spray painted an X over the image when they hightailed it out of Dodge. There are definitely doctors here. Pointing out the obvious, or as I like to call it, pulling a Deanna Troy. At least it ain't clickers. 
Yeah, no fireflies either. Maybe in all that research they turned into f***ing monkeys. Episode teases us with humans turning into monkeys, but never shows us humans turning into monkeys. Damn it all to hell. Hold up. The fireflies have a base in f***ing Fort Smith, Arkansas. I get Memphis and Oklahoma City, but Fort Smith? Have you been there? I refuse to believe the fireflies would invest resources for operations there. Now, Fayetteville, on the other hand. I rewatched this fight five times, and nowhere in it did I see the bandit get enough momentum to stab Joel with his bat. Hell, half the fight, Joel was behind the raider. So I'm calling bullshit on this reveal. If you want to stab Joel, show the stabbing. Joel, open your eyes. Well, at least this episode will let us know Joel's fate before fading to black on yet another cliffhang. Damn it! Over one full minute of watching fungus grow, which literally happens slower than paint drying for what it's worth. You gotta help me. Come on. Asking the guy with a hole in his abdomen for help. Running with a Walkman on. If they'd wanted you to do that, they'd have called it a run, Minnelli. Also, f***ing P.E. Actually, f***ing P.E. might have been interesting. So, P.E. You don't fight. Just your friend fights. She's not here anymore. <laughs> What did you think was gonna happen? Bella Ramsey's just over five feet tall. You don't mess with short girls. I'll kick your fucking ass. It took a zombified giant to kill her in the last HBO series. Did you honestly think you were gonna give her and walk away unscathed? Two paths ahead of you. First path. Wait, is this mug supposed to represent the first path? Why? Do you think you need visual examples to keep two things in our minds? Or is it just that the emptiness of the mug is supposed to represent the emptiness of this speech? I can hold two ideas in my mind without attaching them to random physical objects, Captain Condescension. There's a leader in you. Wait, I was always told there were two wolves inside of me. Now it's a leader? Is the leader one of the wolves? Or is the leader in there a separate entity? F this. Metaphors are hard. The least you could have done was explain it with a mug or something. Is that it? That's it. I'm with Ellie here. She gives Bethany 15 stitches and your complete response is, so, you willing to obey rules from here on out so someday you can lord your power over the girl you just gave 15 stitches to? Yeah? Cool. Carry on then. Not giving Savage Starlight your full interest and attention, you could have been the Feige of the Savage Starlight Cinematic Universe, Ellie, and you threw it all away. From the moment Riley steps into the room, she acts like she's there to murder Ellie, going so far as to wake her up by covering her mouth. In a bit, she'll try to say she meant it to be a joke, but I looked up the definition of joke, and it didn't say anything about a TV show needing a cheap scare, so it makes a character act completely opposite of their own self-interest. Also, Ellie has plenty of time before she knows it's Riley to call out for help, but doesn't, because she is also apparently more interested in the work the show needs to do. Also, also, not keeping your window locked during the apocalypse. In my mind, you loved it. Well, then, you obviously don't know your best friend very well. You know what kind of joke she likes? Puns. Next time, wake her up softly and tell her one of those. At least then you won't get stabbed. Actually, scratch that. The last pun I told got me stabbed three times. Maybe just skip jokes to be safe. Sort of crazy, and you're gonna say no, but then you have to say yes. Looks like Riley went to the Weinstein School of Understanding Consent. It's 2 a.m. The fear is gone. I'm sitting here waiting. The gun's still warm. Maybe my connection's tired of taking chances. You trust me, right? I don't know, mysterious friend who disappears for weeks at a time and breaks into my room to startle me in my sleep. Do I trust you? I don't know. Should I trust you? Putting your trust in someone to answer the question as to whether or not you should trust them. It's like the TV show cliche version of that thing where the one guard always tells the truth and the other one lies and then you have to ask the right question of one of them to know if the other one's the one that's the liar or the truth guy. I also think there's like a melting ice block and a horse named Sunday, but I could be wrong. Are they teaching you this at Firefly University? Show taunts me with a Firefly spinoff where Kaylee and Inara do adjunct teaching to a bunch of Goram college students that will never exist. Firefly lights are better. <laughs> Congrats. One point for the anarchists. We prefer freedom fighters. <laughs> Somehow this episode manages to do a ton of heavy lifting on both the emotional backstory of Ellie, by crafting a relationship we care about, and making a point about polarization and perspective. And they didn't even charge us an extra 15 bucks just to watch the episode. <laughs> Jump scares. Well, technically the opposite of jumping, so drop scares. Is that the first dead body you ever saw? Asking this question to anyone decades into a fast-moving fungus monster outbreak. Chick like our age? No, like 40 or 50. Whatever, anyways, old. Whippersnappers. I mean, kids. 
Movies and shows always make it seem like the roofs are the most stealthy and easiest way to traverse big cities, but roofs are all different and often spread out. They're deadly death traps of death. And unless you're an obese elderly man with a strange penchant for reindeer, you should probably avoid them at all costs. It's okay you don't know everything. Agree to disagree. No! Agree to disagree is not a weapon to yield as a way to end an argument that hasn't even begun. Agree to disagree is an offering you make after listening to each other first and trying to come to an understanding. Once it becomes clear no progress is being made, it's a way to part ways as fellow humans instead of continuing to try to change each other's minds. Stop using agree to disagree as a way to tell me to shut up. I mean, someone. Telling someone to shut up. The mall? You out of your f***ing mind? The exact thing I said to my friends every single Friday night of my high school life somehow makes it into the episode. The amount of electricity needed to light up and run this entire mall would absolutely raise some red flags somewhere in Fedra. I think we're supposed to admire Ellie and Riley's street smarts, but doing stuff like this is more like some street dumbs. No one can see shit but us. That long arch of skylights begs to differ. Unless, of course, this particular mall chose tinted glass for all its windows. Did it? Probably not. Tonight, I'm going to show you the four wonders of the mall. Old people walking, punk kids, overpriced merchandise, and an immediate headache? Well, at least you got one of those covered. No way. And by no way, do you mean no way someone would be this amazed by an escalator even in an apocalypse? Agreed. You are just a graceful ballerina. Don't you mean ballerina? <laughs> uh, see, that's the exact kind of joke that got me stabbed last time. Nobody gets gutted by the end of this dumb teen movie. Cute joke, but think about this for a second. What is the scenario in which someone leaves this place and doesn't come back, but also thinks they'll be back in five freaking minutes? I'm not saying you couldn't concoct one, but I am saying this note is more likely to read, he who is valiant and pure of spirit can find me in the castle of, ah, gap kids. Having a bigger reaction to an escalator than a merry-go-round. Drunk driving. And you might be thinking, hold on, they're riding horses, not a car. But you can still be arrested for driving a horse drunk. Don't ask me how I know. Standing guard while people shovel sh**. Could be worse. You could be the one shoveling sh**. Why didn't you tell me any of this? I don't know. That's a strange way to pronounce because the scriptwriters thought it worked better to say it here so the audience could really feel the depth of the pain of it in the moment. Please insert $5. Oh, f you. Well, look at that. I came prepared. Charging $5 for a photo booth. That shit's outrageous. Should be three tops. Have you done this before? No, idiot. I was waiting to do it with you. Considering all the ways this thing could fail, not testing it out first might make you the idiot in this situation, Riley. Photo developing fluid lasts 18 months in the best of conditions. That one's not bad. Sure, but you also did the scary pose last, so why is it third on the printout? Yeah, I'm the same asshole that spent an hour yesterday breaking this f***er open. Because somehow nobody else thought to do this when sh** started going down and the population was looting everything they could. Smash the buttons. Competitive Smash Brothers players. Also playing Mortal Kombat 2 this much when Galaga is right f***ing there. Round yeah, one. Fight. Choosing Raiden a second time instead of picking someone cool like Jax. Melina's gonna kick your ass again. Is it a dinosaur? Possibly. I mean, I'll be your best friend again if it's a dinosaur. Basing your friendships on a person's ability and willingness to pull a Jurassic Park for you. What did the frustrated cannibal do? Eat themselves out? I may have the wrong pun book. This whole fight could have been avoided if Riley hadn't given Ellie her birthday gift where the bombs are. Why do it here? Do that shit on a table in the food court or any other of the hundreds of rooms inside the mall. You didn't find this mall, did you? They posted you here. Ugh, the show. The constant gut punches. Well, at least I know this is the last one for this episode. Tonight's my last night in Boston. This show decided to go full Rileyo and Elliot and somehow I'm buying it. Stupid emotions. Where's the freaking hot chocolate lady when I need her? These screams will end up being a Halloween decoration because the episode hadn't met its fake-out tension quota yet. I don't know what it was like to have a family, to belong. I mean, I did this never. Thank you. And this music sucks. Saying the music sucks and then proceeding to play I Got You Babe by Sonny and Cher as if it's not an absolute bop. This new nightmare I get to have for the rest of my life. Get your ass up here. Encouraging your friend to stand on glass that may or may not hold your combined weight.
Between this episode and episode three, The Last of Us continues to explore the queerness of its characters in a meaningful way that both validates on-screen representation and doesn't make a big deal out of same-sex relationships. One sent off for handling Ellie's queerness with such respect, instead of ignoring it or using it for a cheap gag. <laughs> Getting knocked the f*** out by simply falling down. Holy sh Premature celebration. We can just be all poetic and sh lose our minds together. Or you could be forcing your best friend to confront you as an infected and kill you. You don't know that you'll turn at the same time. Just gonna add a retroactive sin for the previous episode where Joel told Ellie she didn't know what loss is. And you might say, hey, you can't add a sin retroactively. And I'll remind you that we make the rules around here. <laughs> Putting an old needle that's been on the floor in Joel's body without sterilizing it. He's got a flask with booze. Dip that shit inside first. Also not giving Joel anything to bite down on. Put his coat sleeve in his mouth or something. This isn't pleasant. Also, also, not offering Joel a drink from his flask before doing surgery that makes first aid from a Civil War battlefield look merciful by comparison. Also times three. And most importantly, using a running stitch instead of an interrupted stitch. Revelation 21. The Book of Revelation. Also, reveleration. Also, also, I know we haven't seen the man speaking yet, but I'm already sniffing an overdone evil preacher in an apocalypse hiding behind religion to do evil cliche. Exacerbated by the fact that out of all the scripture to put into his sermon, he went with the big book of apocalyptic imagery written by a man in exile. The Tabernacle of God. Hi there, viewers. A quick note from one of the TV Sins writers here. What is this? I wanted to make a joke about God's tabernacle sounding rude, but Aaron, the narrator, hey, that's me, said it was just my mind being in the gut, because it was, and I should leave it alone. So as revenge, I'm going to make him say tabernacle 10 times. Tabernacle, 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 tabernacle. Look, I'm not Ron Burgundy here. I have free will, and the point was, even if it does sound rude, you're not sinning the show. You're fired. Also, I have no writers. I make up all of this on my own. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. <laughs> Kids, roll flag commercials. The ground is too cold to dig. We'll bury your father in the spring. Isn't cremation a better option all around? They get to have their memorial, and you get to hide the evidence of all the secret cannibaling by just giving the family an urn of ashes. Everyone wins. Wait. How much do we have left? Keep the whole town on rations. Maybe a week. Having a conversation about dwindling food supplies out in the open and risking your subservient flock quickly transforming into a riotous mob. Ah! Stop showing me this disgusting bloody wound. I have enough context clues from the director and editor in this scene without the makeup department feeling the need to flex as well. Ellie, you ass. Why are you torturing this poor man with dried jerky goodness that he can't possibly reach? What's he gonna do? Tongue it into his mouth? Hope that the rat from Endgame nudges it in there? Pray that it decomposes and gets absorbed into his skin? I'm gonna be right back, okay? Don't tell Joel you're going to be right back if you plan on hunting. You're gonna give the guy an anxiety attack as a quick potty break turns into, I'll see you in a few hours because I'm gonna hike through the woods and kill a deer. Well, what do you think? I don't see anybody. And I'm just gonna assume that gunshot we heard was Bigfoot cracking a knuckle. Medicine? Like for infections. I understand Ellie needs to specify antibiotics, but in a world where infected is associated with the fungapocalypse, I'd be more direct about the origin of the infection and not leave quite so much room for the interpretation. It's hard to trust strangers, I know, but I honestly mean you no harm. But if a stranger says they honestly mean you no harm, then you can totally trust them. And I honestly won't sin this for being something only sketchy villains say. And for what it's worth, there's room for you in our group if you want. You're inviting me to your hunger club? Thanks. Ellie would be served with some fava beans and a nice Chianti at TV Sins. Is this some weird cult thing? Well, you sort of kind of got me there. I am a preacher, but just... Pretty standard Bible stuff. Yeah, but if that pretty standard Bible stuff is including the Old Testament, we're talking about slavery, stoning women for premarital sex, and plenty other cornerstones that make most cults look like enthusiastic bloggers. This isn't as reassuring as you think it is, David. It's no such thing as luck. No, uh... I believe everything happens for a reason. I'd love for this to become a four-hour philosophical treatise exploring the concepts of divine providence, free will, determinism, and random chance. But I honestly don't think any of you would want that, even if you think you might. I'll just say this. If your go-to tenet is everything happens for a reason, you better be prepared to give account for some pretty nasty sh** you just hand-waved away. It does. I can prove it to you. The story David shares is about being led to Ellie and Joel after they killed one of his people and is indistinguishable from luck. So no, he can't prove it. James, lower the gun. And of course, James turns up at the perfect time to hear this story and be outraged and at a perfect time to catch Ellie off guard. She didn't kill anybody. She has. 
and he couldn't have possibly known one way or the other. I know you're not with a group. You actually don't know shit. David. For all you know, Ellie and Joel were scavengers for a large group. You weren't even there. Stop making characters omniscient just so you can dismiss possible plot holes. I can protect you. If you're trying to get someone to trust you, maybe don't say things Kylo Ren would say. Oh, wait a second. You don't know who that is because the apocalypse killed the sequels. Hey, maybe there's a silver lining to this timeline after all. Joel, where the f*** do I put this? Ellie gets unbelievably lucky here. I know that injecting a penicillin shot into the wound sounds logical, but I still feel like Ellie took the old stab in the dark adage a bit too literally. Showing us every disgustingly excruciating, purulent, skin piercing second of this. Yes, let's leave the t-shirt covered in infected blood over the infected wound you just risked your life to disinfect. What is it? Venison. Just f***ing say dear. You're not presenting it to Gordon Ramsay. Big one. Bring in a dead animal to a place where people are actively eating dinner. Take the damn thing to a side door and stop swinging your d around while everyone's eating. Don't give the horse snow. Melt it so the horse has water. Eating snow without any other form of water actually dehydrates you and forces the body to use more water to melt the snow and regulate your internal temperature. I know the horse is going to die in a few minutes anyway, but come on, Ellie. This man's not already dead. He's dangerous. Which makes me wonder why you waited so long to pursue them both. Either Joel is dead and Ellie has no reason to hang around overnight, or you're giving Joel time to heal instead of attacking when you know he's weak. Also, nothing says being careful like staying grouped together and walking down the middle of the street. I don't mean to question your sense of mercy, David. Will you bring that girl back with us? She's just another mouth to feed. Revealing that you're about to do a thing by starting your sentence saying you don't intend to do the thing. If we leave her out here, she'll die. Yeah, maybe that's God's will. I will silence you with my silence, because my silence is much more powerful than your very valid point. But really, the answer is that these guys could easily hunt and kill Ellie, but the show needs to keep her alive so we get the big baby girl moment at the end. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I just want us to be honest about it. I'm gonna lead them away from you. But if anybody makes it down here, you f***ing kill them. You got it? Let's talk about Ellie's plan. She's leaving Joel pretty much defenseless while she runs off to get captured. The men don't know what house they're in, so why not barricade yourselves in, hide, and buy time for Joel to wake up? Even if they do find you, you're missing out on the perfect opportunity to home alone some shit. Ellie's galloping away at full speed, and this asshole just so happens to be in the perfect position to take the horse out. Do it. Listen, ammo has to be scarce for everyone in the future, but especially so for this isolated cannibal immunity. So is punctuating your intentions with a rifle shot the best way to use said ammo? You so hungry for vengeance? Deliver it. Judging their bloodlust when the only reason you're pushing so hard to keep Ellie alive is so you can make her into a child bride and or a peritif. Joel not only survives Ellie's first aid, but is also strong enough to stand up and kill this man after one night's rest. I started worrying you wouldn't wake up. Why? You're literally going to eat her. Why don't we just start with your name? Eat shit. Eat shit really has a lot to learn about buying time to escape by being nicer to your captors. Timothy? Oh, sh**. Joel finding the strength to take out Timothy was so ridiculous the camera refused to even film it. In fact, it's so ridiculous that I can feel Grogu reaching from the Mandalorian into this series to help Joel out. It's okay. <laughs> I believe him. Wasting what little strength you've regained on a blunt force instrument for murder instead of just using the knife again. <laughs> he gets found out because the people butchers left a f***ing ear on the floor next to the cage? Do you want ants? Because this is how you get ants. And exposed as a cannibal. You're an animal. Well, yes, we all are. That's sort of the point. Yes, asshole. But you know that's not what she meant. She's fully aware that not all animals are cannibals, just as we're well aware that you can have a show set after the apocalypse that doesn't contain Bible-thumping dictators. It just seems to happen a lot. But what was I supposed to do? Let them starve? No, but I feel like we might be skipping the many, 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 many steps between let them starve and feed them to each other. Didn't he take another man's life to save yours? He was defending himself. He was defending you. I don't think that helps your argument, David. Joel was killing someone to protect a little girl, and what you're doing is killing someone so you can eat them. Forgive me if I lean towards favoring the guy that doesn't hold Hannibal Lecter as a spiritual leader. You remind me of me. You're a natural leader. You're smart. Loyal. You're getting all that from a fireside chat and her refusal to share her name? Yes, it happens to be true, but how does he know that? Did he get screeners for the first seven episodes? What does Cordyceps do? Is it evil? No, it loves. Not quite sure I've seen enough evidence thus far to believe this fungus is capable of love. And no, I refuse to include that freely erotic makeout session in episode two. 
Think of what we could do together, as strong as we are. No offense, David, but Vader's join me was a little more persuasive. That looks pretty f real to me. <laughs> hey, Troy Baker, uh, thanks for calling me back. Listen, sorry you lost out on the role of Joel to Pedro Pascal, but but listen, we, we still want you in the show. And I've got a really great part for you. Okay, so check this out. You're a cannibal that gets killed by Ellie with a cleaver because your friend was dumb enough to leave a knife right next to her unrestrained hand. Pretty cool, right? Troy? Ellie, why are you wasting time with the log? You've got a room full of windows and chairs. Smash window, exit, escape. What is Fedra teaching these kids? <gasps> wow, Ellie threw that log in the one spot it would catch something on fire. Talk about lucky. I, I mean, uh, talk about everything happening for a reason. David seems totally chill with the fact that this lodge made of wood is on fire as if he knows Grogu is on his way from knocking out Timothy to prevent this fire from spreading. I know you're not infected. No one infected fights this hard to stay alive. Man, this is just an episode of David making very confident assessments based on f*** all knowledge. He's one proclamation short of becoming the Dunning-Kruger of post-apostalyptic cult leaders. You don't know what I could have given you! Oh, I think she knows exactly what you could have given her, David. You made that abundantly and creepily clear. Exodus 22-6, was that ceiling beam soaked in kerosene? <laughs> Listen, it is hard for me to hoop and cheer at the sight of a 14-year-old brutally bludgeoning a man's face with a meat cleaver, even if said man is a child-seducing cannibal. Having said that, Bella Ramsey sells this so well, I have to acknowledge the voice inside me that is currently screaming, F*** yeah! F*** that asshole up, Ellie! Turn his face into pulpy potato dolphin wall. <laughs> so when David said, There's no way out, Ellie. The doors are locked. He meant all the doors are locked, other than this fire escape that Ellie will conveniently find now that the danger's passed. It's lies like this that give the church a bad rep, David. Yes, yes, cannibalism too, but no one likes a liar. No! Get out of me! Damn it, Joel. You just recovered from one near-death injury, so why are you so eager for Ellie to give you another? Was the penicillin high that good? It's okay, baby girl. I got you. I got you. They did the thing. Oh, <laughs> they did the thing. But also, do you maybe want to save the heartfelt reunion for when you aren't still dangerously close to the people whose population you've decreased by half a dozen, whose leader you've killed, and whose home is burning down thanks to you? Also, also, are there no guards in this town that would come investigate the gunshots, screaming, the building on fire? Or is the show implying that Grogu killed all of them too? I love how the series brought in the voice actor for Ellie. Do you think she got paid much, or was this opening scene a labor of love? Look, if the delivery of that pun had you groaning, buckle up because they don't get any better after birth. <laughs> Here's a sin for anyone, in jest or otherwise, who's ever made the yeah, but you've never experienced being kicked in the balls argument. <laughs> wow, that was like the ideal birth. I mean, Minus the zombie attack, getting bitten, the high risk of infection, the ass splinters, and the thought of raising a child in the apocalypse, of course. But man, at least it was quick. Hey, I remember you. You're the, uh, the, uh, the lady from the place. I know she's important because this flashlight's lingered on her for so long. Who is she again? Damn it, show would have previously on have killed you. I want you to take her with you to Boston. Find someone to bring her up. Volunteering your child to be raised in Boston. I don't want you to give her this. Wrapping a baby up with a flick knife. You know, sometimes life hits you with sentences you just never thought you'd have to say. <laughs> How long have we known each other? Our whole lives. Saying this as if it has any bearing on the fact that this baby could be seconds away from turning into a mushroom zombie. As if babies weren't annoying enough already. So you pick her up right now and then you kill me. I don't know, Anna. This feels pretty f***ing selfish. You've got a knife. Can't you do it yourself? You're asking your best friend to live with the memory of killing her best friend for the rest of her life. Also, knowing how important Ellie is to Marlene, it is insane that she trusts her with Joel and Tess. I mean, it is a stroke of ridiculous good luck that Joel ends up being as solid as he does. Cover her ears. Cover her ears? Cover her ears. You're in an enclosed space about to fire a gun. When you go to a shooting range, you wear earplugs and extra sound protection over them. You've got a newborn baby there with developing ears. Take her outside or even downstairs. Covering her ears won't do sh Also, he does not. <laughs> Casting Ashley Johnson in this critical role, but only letting us have her for nine minutes and 50 seconds. Beefaroni, Chef Boyardee. Have you ever played this? As if the apocalypse wasn't bleak enough, here comes Jolie to add tinned beef and boggle. Talk about bad luck. 
Military drops bombs. Not one of them hits the building you're trying to demolish. Yes, I'm sure that was the bad luck the contractors were focusing on, and not the fact that the world was ending around them along with their livelihoods. Whoa. God damn it, Ellie! Kids. Also, why aren't we worried about loud noises anymore? Did that just stop being a thing? How does Joel know that this place is free of cordyceps? You better come take a look at this cliche. It's a magical moment in the game, and I'm happy to see this nod, but how the f*** have giraffes, of all creatures, survived 20 years into the apocalypse? Also, how exactly did she spot them from the top of the ladder? When Joel gets to the top, he doesn't see anything and then chases her ass up multiple flights of steps before seeing what she sees. Ellie being able to spot the giraffes is about as realistic as, well, the giraffes being there in the first place. Joel and Ellie look upon the family of giraffes as a wonder of nature and a brief respite from the world of violence and suffering, instead of the three meals a day and fashionably warm clothing that they truly are. Is it everything you hoped for? Got its ups and downs. You can't deny that view. Hey, I remember that. That was the, uh, the, uh, the thing they said at the place. I know it's important because of the deliberate delivery. Damn it, Joe, would a previously on have killed you? After all we've been through, everything I've done, it can't be for nothing. It can. Tommy's sheep ranch, the moon will follow you anywhere you go. Unless there's a particularly cool zoo animal on the loose, in which case I'm ditching you quicker than you can say left behind. Bye! We finished what we started. Which to HBO means two seasons of material stretched into five, followed by five and out spin-offs nobody asked for, only one of which will actually make it to air before being cancelled. So what was wrong with you? It's for this. Not the guy who shot and missed. <laughs> hey, I remember that. That was the, uh, the, uh, the thing they said at the place. Damn it, show what a previously on of What did the green grape say to the purple grape? Breathe, you idiot. Ooh, I've got one. What do you call an early morning surprise attack? An AM bush. <laughs> if you hadn't been so busy punning, maybe you'd have seen that one coming. I had five men whose only job was to protect me. I still almost got killed. How'd you do it? A nifty little thing called blood armor. You see, Joel has to stay alive so that he can be the hero of the story and choose to sacrifice the person he holds most dear for the greater good. Right? You are the one person I never wanted to be in debt to, but I owe you. I mean, to be fair, you only have to give him a battery and some supplies. That was the original deal, right? He chose to take Ellie further than the original agreement. Our doctor, he thinks that the cordyceps in Ellie has grown with her since birth. He thinks it could be a cure, Joel. He thinks? It could? She's happy to sacrifice Ellie's life on the unproven hypothesis of one doctor? I'm sure everyone's desperate for a cure at this point, but we're talking about removing a child's brain based on a maybe. It produces a kind of chemical messenger. It makes normal cordyceps think that she's cordyceps. It's why she's immune. Then why does she still get attacked by them? Shouldn't they think that she's one of them and ignore her? If not, why aren't they attacking each other? And furthermore, why do I keep trying to find logic in a made-up cure for a made-up infection? Also, how long has Joel been unconscious? If the answer isn't several f***ing weeks, I want to know how this doctor's figured everything out so quickly and with a level of confidence that makes Ellie aside acceptable. Please, you don't understand. I'm the only one who understands. Attempting to have a monopoly on guilt slash obligation slash parenting slash the greater good or whatever the f*** it is these two are using to justify their own brand of murder. Walking onto the highway, leave him there with his pack. Considering we're talking about a woman who is lobotomizing the child of her best friend, this seems like an oddly sentimental choice. Letting Joel go might be the right thing to do, but why the f*** does she care about that? She knows his reputation. Kill him! Joel will contemplate his escape for all of the very long walk through the hospital some time, while also, somehow, not being nearly long enough to justify the magnitude of what he's about to do. Shed, keep walking. <laughs> Thanks to the magic of quick cuts and super fast editing, this works. Where is she? F*** you. I don't have time for this. You don't have the bullets for this either. You've already shot the guy in the leg and alerted the whole hospital. What more was he going to do? Bleed on you? Man, this show really did capture a lot of cool details from the game. It even included the mod that makes Joel invulnerable to gunfire. Straight? Murder. Joel tears through this hospital in a way that makes John Wick look like Mr. Rogers. I feel like we're supposed to admire Joel's determination to save Ellie at whatever cost, but it's a rough watch when the people he's determinating are just doing their jobs and likely have no f***ing clue what's happening to Ellie or why. She's ready. Joel wakes from his concussion, argues with Marlene, then the raid redemptions his way through the hospital and manages to arrive seconds before Ellie's surgery is about to begin. Seconds! This is insane timing, people! Doctors Who and Brown could have teamed up and still not pulled this off so perfectly. How did you get in here? He said, as if the answer f***ing matters. I won't let you take her. Bringing a scalpel to a gunfight.
Also, I'm sure killing that surgeon won't have any consequences down the line or in season two. Yep, no further problems will result from killing that doctor. Not even one. Laura Bailey plays a character that should be healing, but instead focuses on doing damage cliche. Also, teasing us with Laura Bailey, but without even a gesture of 25 words of dialogue. Trusting any elevator during the apocalypse. I wouldn't enter an elevator until society had been rebuilt, and even then I'd still wait a decade or two. And only if my knees are really acting up. So what would she decide, huh? Maybe you'd know the answer to this if you'd bothered to ask before lying and sedating her. Sure, Joel's violating Ellie's autonomy by making the decision for her, but you don't get to claim any moral high ground when you didn't ask her either, Marlene. Even after what you've done, we can still find a way. The bullet lodged in the brain of that surgeon would likely take issue with this claim. Raiders attacked the hospital. I barely got you out of there. Lying. And not just lying, but lying badly by adding unnecessary layers to the lie, which makes you look about as suspicious as a 50-something-year-old man driving away from a hospital with a sedated teenager in a flop sweat. You've just come after her. Joel chooses cold-blooded murder again, and I just miss the days of Pedro Pascal playing a charming prince, space cowboy, or drug dealer. <sighs> driving. 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 Wasting valuable minutes of your finale mint. Also, the border between Wyoming and Utah doesn't look like this. It's mostly flat, but you would know that when you film everything in f***ing Canada. Well, Sarah and I used to hike like this all the time. In Texas? Not a lot of mountains to hike in Texas, unless you made a lot of trips from Austin over to Guadalupe Mountains National Park. Even that's an eight-hour drive. Are you going to drive eight hours to hike all the time? I don't think so. Anyway, the point is driving in Texas sucks. More Joel sucks. More hiking sucks. Or whatever point I was making. Swear to me that everything you said about the fireflies is true. I swear. Joel, my man, on a scale of one to really f***ing guilty, that loaded pause ranks a solid puppy sitting next to a pile of poop pointing at the goldfish. Okay. Ellie believes this, or has been Stockholm syndromed into believing it. Either way, I'm fascinated to see how this turns out, and I'm sure it won't be neutered by something like a five-year time jump. The game is absurd, and I want my money back. How do I get my quarters? Stop all the clocks. Cut off the telephone. Prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Concrete guy's gonna be there? Yeah, they said maybe. You do it for the air that will be displaced. And most of all, you oh. do it for the f***ing concrete. Because it is delicate as blood. You really have gone f***ing mad. The voicemail box of... Sterling Archer. Is full. Goodbye. Idiot. God damn it. Are you aiming for these people? No. Maybe that mine. No. No. Okay. You're okay. You're gonna be okay. You have been found guilty by the elders of the town of uttering the name of our Lord. And so, as a blasphemer, you are to be stoned to death. I want you to forget this ever happened. Okay, it lines up straight like that, right? To the right of it and to the left of it are pockets, right? In those pockets of money. Look in either one of them, pay the bill. I'm not supposed to be here! I'm not even supposed to be here today. On a daily basis, I consume enough drugs to sedate Manhattan, Long Island, and Queens for a month. So let's go hunt that motherfucker down and get our battery and our truck. And then we'll go find Tommy. All right. This is the way. Brightest day, blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Tell me to look for the light and I'll break your jaw. I won't tell anyone about any of this, I swear. Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna run? Where are you gonna hide? Phone home. Is that chicken? Silent breed is people! I am eight years old. You think I'd be here alone? I don't think so. But when we get to 20, tell me. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> that was scary. This is Wood. Jesus Christ. That's Jason Bourne. Give me some sugar, baby. This means something. Holy shit. Now, don't take this the wrong way. But you are a Terminator, right? Yes. Sabaton Systems Model 101. I think my legs might be broken, but I'll, I'll try to stand up. Oh! I haven't eaten in two days. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans 
and a nice Chianti. What's your name? I'm Ron Swanson. It is but a scratch. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Okay, but just know, you can't escape Paul Livingston. He'll be back. He will be an unstoppable force for good. This is actually before my time. Right. The winner, though. Why did the Scarecrow get an award? Because he works with the Avengers. What if you don't find him? I will. How do you know? I'm a hard worker. I set high goals, and I've been told that I'm persistent. I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes till the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. You put it in your pack. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Aye, aye, aye. Look at those cans. But when we get to 20, tell me. I'm going to throw up. Did it make you feel better? Did it make you feel safe? How does it make you feel now? These kids, like all of us, are a part of a community. What is it with you kids? Every other day it's food, food, food. Warren, am I the bad guy? I'm bad, and that's, that's good. good. I, I will, will never be good. good. And that's, that's not, not bad. bad. This was actually just a big wooden box. A big wooden box that nothing could get inside of. What's in the box? Should have stolen two rabbits. It's hardly any meat on them. All right, all right. Mickey's a mouse, Donald's a duck, Pluto's a dog. What's goofy? Put your hands up. No. What? Why not? I don't want to. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers gotta hug. Let me help you out. Two paths ahead of you. Meryl Streep or Madonna? Ah! Dead body! Parkour! 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 Close your eyes. What for? Close. Do you trust me? Yes. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Dude. Let's go, lesbians, let's go! I sense doubt in there. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Too much human meat. And the very same goes for Ezekiel. Which brings us back to our starting point, the nine tenets of constancy. Perhaps you could toss me a band-aid or some antibacterial cream. I fear it might be gangrenous. You look like a robe. A well-scrubbed hustling robe with a little taste. Good nutrition's given you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor white trash. Do atheists go to hell? No. How about people who say they are not religious, but they are spiritual? Straight to hell, to the boiler room of hell, all the way down. Hands, are we the baddies? It's a veggie source, Lex, veggie source. Hey, you, you're finally awake. What is that? Uh, this would be a giraffe, Isaac Newton. Is it everything you hoped for? Utah? Home of America's most powerful weirdos? Moon rocks taste better than earth rocks. Why? Because they're meteor. That's not funny. That's not funny at all. What surgery? I'd like to take his face off. What the f*** are you doing? Keep walking. This must have registered on an emotional level. First, distract target. Then block his blind jab. Counter with cross to left cheek. Discombobulate. Swear to me that everything you said about the fireflies is true. I swear. I don't believe you. <laughs>